Welcome to Primetime TNT. Good evening, Julian. And um, it is a pleasure to be here. Good evening to the viewers. Uh, the first thing I would say is that um, we, we describe it as the Trinidad and Tobago Revolution of 1970. In the sense that um, it was a movement for a new and just society in Trinidad and Tobago. But it was revolutionary in the sense that it affected all areas of national life, all sectors of the, of the society. And um, it was a movement that involved the people. It brought a whole new type of politics into Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, the whole concept of people's politics. So 1970 was that kind of movement of participation of the people, the people themselves being involved in the process and being able to affect national life positively. How did somebody like you from Tobago get involved in the first place? Well, as I said, it was a mass movement. And the movement came to Tobago. They held a series of public meetings and then demonstrations. And I participated in the demonstrations in 1970. Under what name were you then? Well, back then I was Fenwick Morin. Uh, I belong to the Morin family uh, who had established Elizabeth's College in Tobago. And um, after 1970, as a statement of our pride in our and who we are, I changed my name to Mbau Muhim, along with others. What does that mean? I have to ask you. Okay, Mbau really means uh, uh, um, some. It it indicates habitation, um, a strong branch, a strong tree that could keep the squirrels, the birds, the you know it it, it provides life. And Muhim is lightning. Because at that time I used to I used to take part in sports and so on. And the concept of... <laughs> you were fast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was this a, a fast conversion, if I, if I may use the term as well? Um, no, because um, I would have joined the movement in 1970. Um, I took the name Mbau possibly in 72. But the actual legal change did not come until 1976 or thereabouts. What attracted you, though? Um, I was attracted by the sense of the, 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 the whole question of justice. I, I think that the cause was a just cause. And as long as something is just, I am prepared to struggle for it, I am prepared to fight for it, I am prepared to sacrifice for it. And there were the sacrifices, because at that time it was not as easy going as now. Okay? Yesterday was the 21st of April. On that day the police came to my home, they kicked down the doors, you know. That was the kind of scenario. I was not arrested then. I was arrested afterwards, but we had the imprisonments, arrested more than once, encountered police brutality. That was it. But you knew that you were struggling for a just cause. But, but what was wrong with the country at that time that would have generated this, 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 this protest, so to speak? Uh, several things. Uh, at the economic level, there was a lot of deprivation. You see, 1970, uh, was nearly eight years after independence. And with the coming of independence, there were expectations. And yet people found that those expectations were not being met. So whether it's at, a, at an economic level, in, at the level of the arts, um, at the cultural level, the, 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 in terms of people's sense of self-respect, uh, because there was still a lot of racism in the society, there were a lot of ills. And... Uh, they needed to be addressed. And this is why people responded in the, in the kind of massive response that you had. Who did they respond to? Because uh, at that point, Dr. Eric Williams, who is revered as a, a father of this nation, was, was running the government. Right. Well, in, in 1970, the chief servant, Makandal Dada, right, head of the National Joint Action Committee, spearheaded that movement for change. You had a demonstration on the 26th of February to the cathedral in Port of Spain, and after that, the floodgates were, were opened. You had 56 days of demonstrations all over Trinidad and Tobago. Um, I could remember when they came to Tobago, they held over 20 meetings in a matter of about three days. And on the 4th of March, with the first demonstration, going down to Mount Irving 
you had over 5,000 people participating. But, but, but was this a political movement? Was this a pressure group? What was it? What, what was operating at that point? It has to be described as political in the sense that it was seeking to give the people what is rightfully theirs, a sense of, of power to determine their own lives. Okay? And um, also giving to them a new concept of participatory politics. You had, for example, establishment of institutions such as the People's Parliaments, <clears throat> where people could meet in communities as it emerged in different parts of Trinidad and Tobago on a daily basis to discuss the um, things that were affecting their communities, take decisions on them, and act on it. Okay, so for the first time in Trinidad and Tobago, you had a sense of participation coming out of the population where they began to be to feel that sense of of, um, of control where their lives are concerned. But but you you, you you seem to talk about a parallel operation here: the government on the one hand, and the the so-called community groups affecting change at the same time. The government continued. But Williams took very much a backseat. As a matter of fact, he did not respond until the 23rd of March, right? When he tried to come out to, 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 to appease the population, and he failed because he was not the government was not willing to accede to the just demands of the population for them to be able to control the resources to control their own lives, to determine what was happening in their society. As a matter of fact, um, one of the slogans of 1970 was, we do not want crumbs, we want the whole bread. This is our land, this is our country, and there is no reason why our people should remain in abject poverty. At that time, we had an unemployment rate hovering with close to 20%, right? Um, a lot of them, young persons, right, um, inadequate edu educational opportunities. And there were, there were disparities. For example, 53% of the, 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 what you may call it, the, the local whites, right, would have, been, would have had the opportunity to achieve a secondary um, certificate. Whereas in the case of the African and Indian population, it was only 4%. Okay, 25% of, of the of the of the whites here had um, university education, whereas the Africans and Indians it was less than one percent. So that there were those disparities. Um, there's the question of the ownership of the resources of the country. Uh, for example, the, the the major owner would have been oil, and at that time, 96% of the oil was owned by foreigners. Okay. If we step across to Tobago, Tobago was an agricultural society, and yet 71% of the best land was in the hands of foreigners. These are the issues that were being addressed, and this is why you had demonstrations to all parts of Tobago demanding that our people uh, be able, be, a, be, be given the right to control their own their lands, to be able to produce. Um, in their own interests.